In northwestern Costa Rica, something truly unexpected unfolded in the late 1990s. A local orange juice company dumped what seemed like a mountain of waste around a thousand truckloads of orange peels onto a sun-scorched, barren patch of land inside a national park. At the time, it looked like nothing more than blatant pollution. Neighbors complained, lawsuits followed, and the project was quickly abandoned. For the next 16 years, no one gave that land a second thought. But when scientists finally returned years later, what they discovered was nothing short of astonishing. The lifeless field had transformed into a thriving forest. What started as an apparent environmental hazard turned into one of the most remarkable ecological transformations ever recorded. But to understand how piles of discarded orange peels could create a thriving forest, we need to rewind. The land where this happened was part of Costa Rica's famed Area de Conservación Guanacaste, a park celebrated for its biodiversity. Yet, much of it had been stripped bare decades earlier by cattle ranching and overgrazing. The soil was trampled hard, the trees gone, biodiversity collapsed, and the ground left dry and lifeless, seemingly beyond repair. For conservationists, restoring such land was slow, costly, and almost hopeless, unless someone could find a bold, low-cost solution. In the mid-1990s, two ecologists, Daniel Jansen and Winnie Hallwax from the University of Pennsylvania, were searching for a practical, low-cost way to restore Costa Rica's degraded lands. That chance came through Del Oro, a local orange juice company producing mountains of waste, peels, pulp, and rinds with nowhere to go. In early 1996, Jansen and Hallwax struck an unusual deal allowing Del Oro to eventually dump truckloads of this waste on a barren three-hectare patch inside the park. To outsiders, it looked reckless, even like pollution. But the ecologists believed the rotting fruit could work as natural compost, reviving the exhausted soil. By the end of that year, the first trucks rolled in, marking the official start of one of the boldest ecological experiments of modern times. The project was a win-win. Del Oro avoided landfill costs, and the park gained tons of organic matter to heal its exhausted soil. For Jansen and Howox, it was a bold but elegant idea. Let nature do the work. The deal was signed in early 1996, and the experiment officially kicked off later that year. Truck after truck rumbled into the Area de Conservación Guanacaste, unloading heaps of pulp and peel. By the end of 1996, nearly 12,000 metric tons, roughly the weight of 2,000 elephants, had been spread across three hectares of barren land. To the untrained eye, it looked like reckless dumping. No signs, no barriers, no high-tech equipment just mountains of bright orange waste baking under the tropical sun. As the heaps fermented, a sharp citrus smell drifted across the landscape. Flies swarmed, fungi bloomed, insects rushed in. To the ecologists, it was messy but promising. The chaos before renewal. Outside the scientific circle, optimism was scarce. Local farmers and townspeople were furious. The stench was unbearable, and fears of water contamination or strange diseases spread quickly. To them, this wasn't restoration. It was pollution. But the fiercest opposition didn't come from locals at all. It came from Del Oro's biggest rival, a juice company called Chico Fruit. They accused Del Oro of illegally dumping waste in a protected ecosystem. And behind the environmental outrage was business. Del Oro was saving millions on disposal and gaining goodwill, while Chico Fruit was left out in the cold. What began as a quiet ecological experiment suddenly exploded into a national controversy. Newspapers ran headlines. Activists demanded answers. 
and government agencies stepped in. By 1998, barely a year after the first truckload arrived, the case landed in court. The judges ruled against Del Oro and ordered an immediate halt. Overnight, the project ended. No more peels, no more trucks. The site was abandoned, unmarked, and soon forgotten. What once looked like a bold experiment, now dismissed as a failed stunt, swallowed by time. The heaps of orange waste were left to rot, dismissed as a failed stunt, and forgotten by the world. The media lost interest, scientists moved on, and even the ecologists who once championed the idea turned elsewhere. For over 15 years, the site sat abandoned. No new waste, no follow-up studies, just silence under the tropical sun. Yet beneath those decaying peels, the soil was quietly transforming. Then, in 2013, Princeton graduate student Timothy Truer stumbled across a passing mention of the project in an old paper by Jansen and Holvox. It noted that no one had revisited the site since the shutdown. That tiny detail lit a spark in Truer's mind. What had become of the land after all those years? Curious, Truer contacted Jansen and Hallwax, and together they tracked down the long-lost dumping ground. The signs were gone, the landmarks erased, and the once-cracked sun-baked pasture now teemed with life, towering trees, twisting vines, birds overhead, and buzzing insects. To confirm it wasn't just impressions, Truer launched a formal study comparing the orange-treated site to a nearby control plot. The results were staggering, nearly three times more plant growth, a 176% increase in biomass, and a surge in tree diversity. All naturally, with no planting, irrigation, or maintenance. The peels had smothered invasive grasses, enriched the soil, and allowed native species to reclaim the land. What began as heaps of rotting fruit had quietly sparked a full-scale ecological comeback. Once dry and barren, the soil had transformed, rich with nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon the building blocks of life. By suppressing weeds and feeding microbes, the orange peels allowed plants, insects, birds, and even small mammals to return. The lesson was clear. Organic waste can be a low-cost, powerful tool for restoration. Essentially, carbon capture without expensive tech. In 2021, similar experiments with coffee pulp showed tree cover soaring to 80% in just two years, invasive grasses disappearing, nutrients surging, and saplings shooting up 15 feet. If waste can grow a forest, what else are we throwing away? Next time you toss an orange peel, remember, somewhere in Costa Rica, a whole forest exists because of it. If this blew your mind, hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Would you support more projects turning waste into ecosystems?